A declassified CIA document called the Adam and Eve story has generated much controversy over predictions of an upcoming pole shift and catastrophic events that may sweep the planet in the not-so-distant future. I just published a video on the crustal displacement theory by Charles Hapgood yesterday, and this is our next follow-up. Now, the 57-page document that was declassified called The Adam and Eve Story is a book that's based by author Chan Thomas back in 1963, but the publication date of this pamphlet is 1965, which leads me to think that there was some information removed from the actual printing of the book. In it, Jan Thomas proposes a pole shift scenario that differed in significant ways with what Charles Hapgood had earlier proposed in his pioneering 1958 book, Earth's Shifting Crust, which, by the way, had a foreword by Albert Einstein. Now, Hapgood's theory, which was endorsed by Einstein, proposed that the geophysical poles periodically move as much as 40 degrees through crustal displacement. Now, this phenomenon is brought on by the increasing weight of the polar ice caps, which accumulate more and more ice over the millennia until they eventually generate sufficient centrifugal force due to the planet's rotation to make the crust move over the mantle, as Einstein explained in the book's foreword. Now, this crustal slip could only happen during a magnetic reversal when the magnetic friction between the crust and the upper mantle can be released. And if you watched the video yesterday, it's not haphazard because according to Mario Buildup reps, Build Reps, the pole position has gone from here just straight down in a line down through Greenland only. So old pole, newer pole, newer pole, newer pole, current pole which means Greenland should continue to slip to the south during the next movement of the rotational pole. It should only be a minor one because based on the Antarctic ice cores, it appears that each of these pole movements occur around every 100,000 years. And the last one just happened during the Holocene extinction event. Now, Hepgood's theory which was endorsed by Einstein, proposed that the poles periodically move as much as 40 degrees through these displacements. But in the Adam and Eve story, something completely different is proposed. Jan Thomas proposes that the pole shift was much greater, as much as 90 degrees, all the way to the equator, with the poles shifting into the equatorial zone in less than one day. Chan had proposed that the poles would flip back and forth in this way so that Antarctica would eventually return to the South Pole region and the Arctic would do likewise, potentially in a slightly different position based on the work of Mario Bildreps. Now, each time the geographical pole did one of these 90-degree flips, there would be a catastrophic winds and tidal waves all over the planet. And this is due to the fact that Currently, there's a 13-mile bulge of water at the equator. And if we were to move the equator in some way, that bulge will move and it will inundate lands, equatorial lands especially. So the equatorial zones are the most at risk. Water and wind would continue to move in a westerly direction because of low inertia and the slowing of the rotation of the Earth sweeping over the land masses that traveled over the equatorial region during the shift, as Chan Thomas explains in the Adam and Eve story. In a quarter to half a day, the poles move almost to the equator. And that would be a 13-mile bulge of water that hits them. And I explained this uh, nine months ago in my Adam and Eve um the first synopsis, it's a three-part series, the part postlude, part one, part two, and part three. You can re-watch those, but we're going to do a much more detailed analysis this time. So what you can see from Chan Thomas's theory 
versus hap goods is that the poles go back to their original position and that the shift is very rapid, which would explain why geologic evidence supports our rotational pole sitting up where it is currently forever, basically. Very little movement. The only movement we can discern is that by the Milankovitch cycles. The eccentricity, the obliquity, and the precession of the equinoxes of the Earth. The Earth is wobbling like a top, according to physics. But it's anyone's guess if any of this is right. So we're doing our best. Because we're scientists. We have to keep moving onward, upward, and forward. Now, as far as some of the theories about Chan Thomas as not being a real human... I have both copies um, of the documents. And why did the CIA classify the first Adam and Eve story, which I own? Here's the sanitized version. It's a 57-page pamphlet published in 1965 by Chan Thomas. And I own the original. I bought it at auction. Rex Bear owns a signed copy of the original. I showed it earlier in the show. Let me find that. I think it's right here. Nope. That's the original pamphlet. And here's Rex's signed copy. No, we don't have it. It's not up anymore. <laughs> well, I do digress. But I have both of the versions. I have the 1965 version. And one of our fans sent me a brand new first edition of the 1993 version. Now, why did they classify the 65 version? Because it shared information about cyclical cataclysms. And if you started doing the math, you'd realize the next one's about to happen. So that would really freak you out. It also explained the plasma universe framework, which no one was working with. So the information was hidden. Now, I believe that the sanitized version approved for release. Take a look. This is the CIA Freedom of Information Act. You'll be linked to all this below, but here the date is 65. And in the research I did, Chan Thomas's first version was to be published in 1963. So the version that I have and everyone else has is not what he was publishing. And the 1993 version may be closer to the truth, which is very difficult to get. Now this version is about $2,000 now. And the 93 version is approaching 100 bucks for any copy. So it's hard to get these uh, originals. There's the 65 that I have, signed by Chan. And there's the 1993 version. Now, the 93 version is much longer. It has a first section called The Adam and Eve Story by Chan Thomas. And it's 127 pages. And then there's a second part called The Aftermath of the Adam and Eve Story by Chan Thomas. And that one spans another 85 pages, which is still short of what the CIA said was the original version. Now, what I want to read you from is the 93 version in Chan Thomas' own words, who he was. This is his own bio written by himself. Dr. Thomas attended Dartmouth College and Columbia University, graduating from the latter in electrical engineering. He was even on Johnny Carson. As a result of his research and analysis since 1949, Dr. Chan Thomas has become recognized as the world's leading authority in cataclysmology. His cross-correlation Correlation research in cataclysmology has demonstrated that the cataclysmological concepts as presented by Duloc in 1779 and Cuvier in 1812 are definitely more acceptable with international science circles than they have been previously. His discovery of the process by which nature makes gravity I'm not even making this up. Check out the McDonnell Douglas project where Chan was involved. 
Do I have some links? Darn it. Well, we're going to get to the gravity part in a future episode. But his discoveries of the process by which nature makes gravity, which has withstood the test of predictability, has enabled Chan to analyze many sightings of spacecraft and present plausible analysis of how these crafts are constructed. So he's into ufology. Now, Chan devoted 20 years in the writing of the Adam and Eve story which included seven years in retranslating Genesis 1, 2, and 3, for which he was awarded the Doctor of Divinity degree and subsequently ordained as a non-sectarian minister. He is the only person to have formalized the science of cataclysmology achieved through, first, cross-correlating known accepted data toward proving or disproving whether cataclysms have happened. Then, deriving the process of cataclysms, followed by the time schedule of cataclysms, and 15 years of research in deriving the trigger. These are his own words. And he then finishes this version, right here, with these sentences. If you think we should not be concerned, take some time to think of this. Now, this was written in 1993, 26 years ago. The United States Geological Survey and independent research physicists have issued the statement that the Earth's magnetic field strength is decreasing at an alarming rate. This is back in 93. In the past 350 years, approximately, the Earth's magnetic field strength has decreased 35 to 40 percent. That's a tremendous drop. The entire solar system is approaching a null zone in the Milky Way galaxy, which, by the way, we've entered. And this means an MHD null zone, our 60-mile thick, 250-plus degree Fahrenheit molten layer, will be freed once more to act as a free liquid. And you might want to read on the very first chapter again, and page 107 and on is what he's referring to. This is Chan Thomas's own words. A little bit of knowledge can be da a dangerous thing, or it can be a vibrant seed giving rise to verdant forests and awakening sleeping giants. Now the work of Duloc, he basically was one of the first cataclysmologists on Earth, and he based his studies on sedimentology, stratigraphy, my specialty. And if you want to know about the history of the man, I'll leave you links below. Cuvier was the first person to understand mass extinction and the fact that evolution was bunk. Because like all paleontologists, like myself, we know that there are no transitional species. There are boundaries upon which new species lie above and old species lie below. This has been known time immemorial. Darwin's work has been propelled to the forefront, not based on science fact, based on science fiction. The facts are there were many megalithic creatures that roamed the earth recently, and they're all missing. And as early as 1780, we understood this scientifically. Paleontology has been dead since then. There is not a single development that has changed since the 1800s in the world of sedimentary geology until these works, which have been covered up by the alphabet agencies that hired these people to work for them. Hapgood was the first CIA agent. Before that, he was an agent of all the previous propaganda machines. And here we see Chan Thomas, as well as Stan Friedman, Part of the McDonnell Douglas Project. There are many more chapters in this investigation to uncover. Share this with like-minded people. Ask questions below. I'm sure I'll cover them. We're taking it very slowly so you can understand each important part in the process 
of uncovering the truth on what actually happened in our past and what will actually happen in our future. We love each and every one of you. Thank you for listening to this information and sharing this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And be safe. More to come.